Welcome to the educational channel. This is Unit 4, Episode 18, Reading Comprehension and Translation. We're still talking about the Earth at risk. But first, let's see today's episode. We'll cover the reading comprehension part, but I will give you a few tips before we start. Have a look at the questions before you read the passage. Read the first sentence of each paragraph and pay attention to the transition words. Discuss the meaning as if you were telling it to someone else. And when you come across a difficult word, try to guess the meaning from the context. Go back and reread after you have read the question. Let's take a look at the questions first. Always read the questions before reading the passage. Number one in the multiple choice questions. Which of the following would be the main idea of the second paragraph? Now, for this question, you need to skim the paragraph, meaning to look over it very quickly. The main idea is the point of the paragraph. It is the most important part of the paragraph. The author can locate the main idea in different places, but is usually the initial sentence of the paragraph. Question number two in the multiple choice. What is the antonym of the underlined word harsh in the second paragraph? This needs careful reading and scanning. Build up your vocabulary. This will help you easily identify synonyms or antonyms. And here it is asking for an antonym. Antonym means the opposite of the word. Focus on the context where the word is giving. Now, also, Sharpen your knowledge of idioms and expressions. Question 3. What does the underlined word there in the third paragraph refer to? Words such as this, these, it, or they are used in specific sentences. You need to scan the targeted paragraph, which is always mentioned in the question. And here it's the third paragraph. Pay attention to the sentence which is closer to the reference word. Question 4. According to the passage, land can no longer be used for growing crops if... How to locate explicit questions? It is something that has been clearly expressed. Scanning is highly recommended. Reading and understanding the question carefully and focus on textual information. Question 5. According to the passage, which of the following is true? How do we answer implicit questions? The target information is not directly stated in the passage. You need to use your personal background knowledge and the textual information to answer this question. Reading between the lines, meaning understand the passage you are reading. After the multiple choice questions, you have the productive questions. This means they need full, meaningful sentences. Question number six. Are human activities the only cause for desertification? Justify your answer. Question seven. According to the passage, what are the causes of so soil erosion? Question eight. Why do farmers tend to over-cultivate their land? And question nine. To what extent are trees and plants vital, meaning important, to the environment. You will find the article in your student's book, Unit 4. Let's read the article together and then go back to answering the questions. We will start with paragraph 1. Desertification, which is the process in which productive land changes into desert, is an increasingly serious problem in over a hundred countries worldwide. 1 billion people out of a total world population of 6 billion endure its effects. Desertification usually occurs in dry areas where there is no rain and where the climate is harsh. In these places, the top layer of soil is destroyed so that the land can no longer be used for growing crops or grazing animals. This means that people who depend on the land for food have to move to greener areas in order to survive. A proportion of the population may survive by moving, but others may die because of shortages of food and water. Although natural changes in the climate often precipitate the process, 
The activities of human beings are often the real cause of desertification. Because there are growing numbers of people to feed, farmers tend to over-cultivate their land, with the result that the soil becomes poor and unproductive. Other farmers overgraze their land, and this is permanently kills off grass and other plants. In addition to the effects of farming, deforestation, the cutting down of trees, also erodes the soil. Trees are usually cut down to make more agricultural land, but once there are no longer trees and plants on an area of land, there is nothing to stop the wind and drain from blowing or washing away the top layer of soil. The dust which this produces can travel long distances and affect the health of people living in cities thousands of kilometers away. However, this is not the end of the story. Desertification can also create conditions which produce strong winds and treacherous wildfires, and this leads to even greater pressure on the Earth's most precious resource, water. Now that we have read the passage, and I'm sure you know most of the information in the passage, let's start with the multiple choice questions. We will read the question again, we will read the choices we have, and then we will search for the answer. Which of the following would be the main idea of the second paragraph? This means we will go back to the second paragraph and check what is the main idea. Is it A, the results of wildfires? Is it B, causes of desertification? C, reasons for cutting down trees? Or D, how dust affects the health of people living in cities? Paragraph 2. Now, it says here desertification usually occurs in dry areas where there is no rain and the climate is harsh. What do I call these? In these places, the top layer of soil is destroyed so the land can no longer be used. These are causes of desertification. This is the main idea of the second paragraph. Question 2. What is the antonym of the underlined word harsh in the second paragraph? Antonym means the opposite of the word. Now, harsh is located here. It's underlined in the second paragraph. Desertification usually occurs in dry areas where there is no rain and the climate is harsh. What's the opposite? What's the antonym of the underlined word harsh? Is it arid? frigid, humid, or pleasant. Of course, the opposite, the antonym of harsh is pleasant. Now, what does the underlined word there in the third paragraph refer to? Remember, when we have word reference, we go back to the paragraph and read the whole sentence, or maybe a sentence before. Here, we can see there is underlined and in yellow. Because there are growing numbers of people to feed, farmers tend to over cultivate their land. Let's see, is it people, farmers, changes, or the activities? There refers to the farmers. Question four, according to the passage, Land can no longer be used for growing crops if Is it A. There is shortage of food B. People move to greener areas C. The top layer of soil is destroyed D. Farmers graze their animals on the land Let's take a look at this question again. Land can no longer be used for growing crops if Let's go to the second paragraph. Here you can find the answer. It says here, in these places, the top layer of soil is destroyed so that the land can no longer be used for growing crops or grazing animals. So when is it? The top layer of soil is destroyed. This is when you can't use the land no longer. Question five, according to the passage, 
Which of the following is true? A. Deforestation prevents land expansion. B. Deforestation is caused by desertification. C. The actions of human beings are the only cause of desertification. And D. Farmers tend to over cultivate their land with the result that the soil becomes poor. Which one is true? Meaning which one is mentioned in the text or you understood it from the text? In paragraph three, we can find our answer. Because there are growing numbers of people to feed, farmers tend to over cultivate their land with the result that the soil becomes poor and unproductive. So this one is true. Farmers tend to over cultivate their land, which causes the soil to become poor. After we're done with the multiple choice questions, now we will answer the productive questions. This means, again, that you have to write full, meaningful sentences for the productive questions. Question six. Are human activities the only cause for desertification? Justify your answer. Meaning, you can't write yes or no and stop right there. You have to justify why did you say yes or no. Let's find the answer. Although natural changes in the climate often precipitate the process, the activities of human beings are often the real cause of desertification. So is it the only cause? Are human activities the only cause? It says here natural changes in the climate often precipitates the process. So no, desertification is the result of both human activities and climate change. According to the passage, what are the causes of soil erosion? Let's go back to the passage. What causes soil erosion? Here you can see that we have a sentence that says also erodes the soil. So we read the whole sentence to find out the answer. In addition to the effects of farming, deforestation, the cutting down of trees, also erodes the soil. So the causes of soil erosion are farming and deforestation, both of them mentioned in the same sentence. Question eight. Why do farmers tend to over cultivate their land? Here it says, because there are growing numbers of people to feed, farmers tend to over cultivate their land. So the reason is, Farmers tend to over cultivate their land in order to feed the growing number of people, the growing population. And question nine, to what extent are trees and plants vital to the environment? They stop the wind and the rain, which may wash away the top layer of soil. Do you remember? We also took this question as a setback in episode 16. They also stop the dust that affects people's health. We're done with the comprehension. Let's move on to the translation. Here are a few tips if you want to translate sentences. You will get sentences in Arabic. You have to translate them into good English. First, translate meaning, not words. You have to understand the sentence in order to translate it. Avoid word-for-word -word translation and don't leave spaces for words you don't know. Try to guess the meaning. If you understood the sentence, you will know words to write in the translation. Now, sentence number one. Siham. تعد عملية اقتلاع الأشجار سببا رئيسيا لظاهرة التصحر. Here we have two terms that you probably know by now. اقتلاع الأشجار التصحر. Now. You have to understand the sentence. You can read it more than once if you would like that. And then translate what you understood and try to use the terms that you learned recently. Siham, I can say deforestation. If you forgot that one, you can say cutting down the trees. Both are correct. Deforestation or cutting down the trees is the main cause the main cause of desertification. 
Number two. نجلاء هذا صحيح فهي تؤدي بدورها إلى آثار مدمرة على مناخ العالم والبيئة. Now, here, if you understand the sentence, you can write that's true, you can write that's correct, that's true, or that's right. It destroys the world's climate. If you know other words other than destroys, it would also be correct. It destroys the world's climate and the environment. Now, remember, you don't have to write the exact sentences we have here. These are model answers. I'm pretty sure you can think of better sentences to write. In the translation, as long as you understand the sentence, you can translate in good English easily. Let's take a vocabulary exercise. Do you remember these words? Arid, climate, day-to-day, -day, droughts, equator, forecasting, frigid, humid, planting, and prevailing. In this paragraph, you will find it also in the student's book, Unit 4. It's asking how is climate different from weather? This paragraph will help you if you want to answer the set question, what is the difference between climate and weather? Weather is what happens to the air and atmosphere outside on a basis. Weather happens on a day-to-day -day basis, remember? Whilst climate is the prevailing weather in a particular place over a long period of time. Countries near the have tropical climates, near where? The equator, the imaginary line. Countries near, near the equator have humid, tropical climates, while lands close to the desert, such as Kuwait, have hot and dry climates. In countries nearer to the frigid, because I have polar, very cold, regions than Kuwait, the climate is cooler and colder. There we go. This does not mean that countries that are normally cold and wet cannot have hot, arid, dry, arid weather. Some even suffer from droughts, which are periods of very low rainfall. Information about climate is useful for weather forecasting that can help farmers know the best time for planting crops. In this episode, we learned how to extract relevant information after reading a passage, we answered multiple choice questions and productive questions, and we tackled the translation and we had a small vocabulary exercise at the end. Thank you for watching.